this session unlocking the healing power there are two parts to to this session the first part is the talk where i lead you through the element and the subject of spiritualist healing but then the second part of this session is the questions and answers because I believe that often when we give talks or lectures that this part is a bit short at times. And what I want to reassure you is really there are no stupid questions. So every question has its right to be brought forward and there might not be an answer for it yet. But maybe then together we can go and lead, direct the mind into finding out more. So I'm looking really forward to just explain you a little bit why I chose this title, Unlocking the Healing Power. Doesn't that sound fancy, ladies and gentlemen? Isn't that incredible? that we should be able to unlock something that is dormant. I know some of you are healers, some of you might starting out, and which is great. So I really ask you to hold your questions towards the end if there is something that you need to have clarified because it relates to the talk I give, Please raise your hand and I will try to sort that out. Okay, would you do that for me? That is wonderful. So you see, ladies and gentlemen, when we look at spiritualist healing, then we just relate that to laying hands on a body, closing our eyes, and don't really know what is happening. But yet, when we look at the definition that spiritualists have for spiritual healing, then it gives us great insight in what it entails. And this is what we are going to look at during this talk. So the definition that we have as spiritualist healing mediums is that we use the forces and energies from God channeled through the spirit world and the spiritualist healing medium to the patient through the laying on, on hands on the body, prayer, or direction of thought from a distance. Sounds nice, but what does that really mean? So what is interesting sometimes within the spiritualist movement is that the word or expression God is like a no-go area. We seem to have lost this connection what God actually means. And I'm not talking about the person or the picture that we were te taught to have in mind. It's not what I'm talking about when mentioning that word God. When we speak about God, we accept this great power, this superior force that created all life. So if we are starting to learn to have a different relationship with this word God and bring it into the bigger picture of the essence of all life, that one heartbeat of all that we are, then a whole new world is opening up. And often in spiritualism, what you can see is the worship of spirits. The worship of spirit guides. 
and the denial of the God force within our movement. But yet, when we really truly analyze how important that this source is, where we channel actually this healing force from, then we see that we as maybe people who start with becoming a healer need also to work on our relationship with that God force. Because it starts to make sense that we as the healing medium, we are the channel of that healing force. But healing is not of us. And healing is not of the world of spirit. Healing is or resides within the God power. And it is a great philosophical question that all of a sudden opens up. And then it also explains why spiritualist healing is not just the laying on on hands or the direction of thought. It is much more because it's an attunement to that higher consciousness who allows the world of spirit to direct this healing energy through the medium to touch the very soul of our patient. Now, I was, as a spiritualist healing mediums, and I have to say I'm guilty of that myself, when I started out as a healing medium with my training through the SNU, Spiritualist National Union, I was too involved within that healing process because I had a need. Everyone who came to me, who I seem to have treated, should get well. And I had this wish within me that spiritualist healing has to work. But yet coming back to what spiritualist healing really is, and what its aim is to really touch the recipients or how we call it the patient's soul shows you that it has nothing to do with healing the physical body it has nothing to do in healing the mind what it tries to do is to reach and motivate the spark within to activate the self-healing process. But there is another element within this power and that's the directing force of the spiritualist, uh, spiritual healer that we call guides. The healing ministers. So when we provide spiritualist healing, we know that there is an intelligence out there that has the knowledge how to direct it, but yet still has to comply with natural law. So here we sit as human beings. What does that mean, healing? How can someone heal? If someone comes to me to receive healing for their damaged knee, and they leave with the damaged knee still. Well, what do they think? It didn't work. But then us, through education and knowledge, gaining really that, that clear attitude. What is healing about? We then know, okay, if the he healing hasn't touched the knee, we know that the healing will touch something else. But what was it that the healing touched? And where do we define what healing is? For the one who suffers a certain, from a certain disease, healing is only taking away the symptom, the cause of pain. The fact is, what is behind that symptom? And it's the cause, the very fact why a symptom 
starts to show itself. And we as healing mediums need to become very, very clear right in the beginning that our rational, logical, analytical mind is not able to play part within that process. Because nowhere in this definition that I, I told you before does it say the healer's mind is involved. But yet I know as a healing trainee, I sat there and I said, I wish that the healing works. I wish that the healing works. And what did I do? It's my mind directing and influencing a power that is divine. How dare I, thinking that I have the knowledge to guide a divine force? But yet I also have to understand, or we have to understand, that this is a development, this is a process. And how are we unlocking this power? How do we evoke this power? This is always a question. Because we hear about this word attunement. Sounds great. But who does really explain what attunement means? Well, I know I need to connect with the world of spirit, but how do I connect with the world of spirit? Is it my mind that connects with the world of spirit and says, okay, I'm here now, are you here too? A novice might think that. So within the development, and, and this is where it is so beautiful, and this is where it explains very clearly why it is called the healing medium. It is the quality of the medium that is needed for those spiritual energies to be channeled through. Therefore, not only a demonstrator or communicating medium needs to know and learn how to tune themselves to that power that communicates with them, also a healing medium does have to do that too. So you can see that it goes beyond just sitting down and putting hands on a body because that's not enough. We have to be very, very careful and often we hear the terminology magnetic healing. My wish to heal activates automatically my power that reaches out to people. My empathy my wish for someone to be healed. But it's not our magnetic power that we want to invoke, it is the spiritual power. And therefore, magnetic power is of the physical. But what we want to invoke is the spiritual. So now the question is, what is the spiritual within us? We hear about words like, the spiritual body, the spiritual mind, but what is it exactly? Harry Edwards has wonderful explanations. It is something that is difficult to grasp, that we seem to have a spiritual body that is a duplicate of our real body. And beside our normal conscious mind, we seem to have a spirit mind, because we are more than just physical beings. Do you agree with that? Yeah. The holistic approach of mind, body, soul, spirit. There we have it, where we combine everything. And when we look at that, that the spirit world is of thought, a fine matter, then we all of a sudden realize how we can connect with this spirit world through a spirit mind. Well, how do we get to that spirit mind? How do we become so strong that this connection starts to work? Because it's like a radio station, isn't it? And you're driving, well, with digital radio, it's a bit different. But now go back into the 70s, please, ladies and gentlemen. By the way, I, I experienced those times too, so I'm not that young anymore. 
So do you remember when you all, were all of a sudden drove into white noise because the channel has changed and you weren't on the right frequency? Well, this is the same thing with the world of spirit. So to be attuned to something, you have to have a receiver, but you also have to have the right frequency to be connected with each other. And the connection happens through the spirit mind of yourself, which is part of you, to the spirit mind that is this discarnate. And all of a sudden it starts to make sense. So if our diseases start within our spirit double, then that's why some people who are, for example, medical clairvoyants and can see energy, they might see that this body is sick. But when I say clairvoyance, this is a faculty that is very much trained within the communicating mediumship. But where is it taught within healing mediumship? It isn't. I can understand why not. Because the danger would then be as a healer to diagnose. To say, oh, I see there is something wrong there which haven't, hasn't even manifested yet. Where is the proof of that? And then if I'm not careful and I'm telling my patient what I am seeing can cause terrible things. Do you agree with that? So there is a fine, fine balance. But now coming back to the spiritual nature of spiritualist healing. So how are you able to become a healer? Do you think everybody's able to do this? to become this, or are there limitations? Well, I believe everybody has the faculty. But it doesn't mean everybody has the potential to really become a good healer. Because it's with everything in life too. We can all learn to play the piano, even maybe me, it will take like 30 years but I will never be allowed to play in a big hole. So we can see that there is a different quality within us that needs to be right. It doesn't mean that you can't be a healer, but also it means that we have maybe to work a little bit harder than people who are really gifted because we see that in everyday life. Some people, they just get it. It is inherited. It is something that is just there. They can't explain what they do, how they do it. They just do it. And then there are the others, for example, like me, who have to work. But what is so beautiful with, with our work is that through understanding and practice, we will get somewhere. So let's look at spirituality. The healing or the practice of healing is a being of absolute service. We could actually say it is the highest form of being of service because what is greater than supporting and helping people to get heal again. Nothing is all that we are, is all that we seek. So spirituality is something where we seek a connection to something bigger. And within our movement, the Spiritualist National Union, which is a religion with its unique philosophy. We have the healing that is embedded within that practice. Because it supports our journey of life, because it supports the search of meaning. 
it supports that element that is sacred. I have a problem with people coming through our doors and saying, I need a top up of energy. I had that, ladies and gentlemen. And I know I'm not spiritual to think and judge about these people. Because if it's that what they seek and search, then that's fine too. Who am I to judge? But yet, because I know how sacred this act of healing is, I could tell them. And believe me, this is really difficult for a Leo to just be quiet. It doesn't matter because even though that people might tell you that they are seeking a top up and they are coming back every single week, I know that their soul power knows more. They might not be able to define what they are looking for. And that's why they say, oh, I need a top up. But actually their soul power knows it. So it is something, spirituality, something that seeks interconnectedness. It is the search of well-being. And you can now see that how important that spirituality is connected to spiritual healing. Because one goes hand in hand, even though our patients might not understand it. But what we can help them if we have the understanding and proper education we can support them in finding answers like why do i have to suffer why do i have to go through this because we have to be honest we can't promise cure but yet we know that spiritualist healing works and helps. But on what level? So we know we have the physical level. We know we have the emotional level and mental level. But then also the spiritual level. So how can we judge on what level spiritualist healing works? Well, through proper education. Because when we really put in that much effort to investigate the healing power and our attunement, as we normally do as communication mediums, then we would train our sensitivity, our awareness. And through training our sensitivity and awareness, we would invoke the spiritual aspect within us who is, which is in search of healing. I can ask you, not that you have to answer, but just think about what brought you into the movement of spiritualism. I would say it was the wish to heal. It was the wish to find closure and knowledge that everything is okay. And this is what we can provide through spiritualist healing and knowledge. Because people come to us with those questions. Am I a good person? Am I doing enough? What's my connection to the world? Where do I fit in? People who don't know where they belong to, become ill. And there you can see what spiritualism combined with spirituality is bringing is an understanding of gratitude. Gratitude brings the feeling of contentment. And contentment brings a feeling of everything is okay. But then also combined with the physical mind that then learns and 
is conditioned to look into the world and see the good supports one and the other. So you can see how spirituality all of a sudden is connected to well-being, mental, emotional well-being. If I feel content within myself, my mental state of being will feel content. And there you can see where the spiritual is, uh, the spiritual energies are starting to work on a spiritual level within. I think it's incredible. It is an intelligence that is not able to be steered or directed by us, because how can we? We can't. We don't have the knowledge. Our physical brain hasn't got the knowledge to judge where spiritualist healing is needed. So what we have to learn as healing mediums is complete surrender and the knowing that the spirit knows best and that the God's power knows best. We can't judge the tapestry of life. We can't interfere, nor have we the right to alter natural law. Everything is dependent on that. But what is really nice when we then move on and allow those healing energies just to work as they are meant to work, us becoming that absolute still channel that allows these God energies of healing to flow through, directed by the world of spirit, then, then we have miracles. Our human mind sometimes is a bit tricky. And I'm coming back to that element that wants to do good, that wants to heal. For example, I had a lady coming to me who wanted healing. Well, we did a session together. I was aware of certain things that were going on within her stomach area, but that was it. And then at the end, she asked me, what were you aware? Actually, I shouldn't be aware of anything because I shouldn't analyze during that moment. But while I was coming back into my normal state of consciousness, I became aware of where these healing energies did flow to. And I told her, and she was so disappointed. And then I said, what would you have expected? And then she said, I have tinnitus. And I would have expected for the power to go there. Well, I know this is a terrible, terrible thing to have because it will affect the mental well being. Because not finding that stillness and quietness. But she was disappointed. I wasn't because I knew that the spirit healing power channeled by God went where it needed to be. But maybe in her eyes, leaving me, she would then maybe judge me and say, oh, that was rubbish. And maybe other people tell healing medium, oh, do you know what, I didn't feel anything. That doesn't work at all. I tried it, but, but you're all charlatans. Well, we have, to, we have to agree that this can happen. But yet, not allowing ourselves to be disappointed or destroyed by it. Because how easily is our confidence knocked? Very easy, ladies and gentlemen. 
I mean, even I who is doing this now for quite some why, uh, some some time is like, well, of course I want this issue to be gone. And then I thought, you know what, I could offer this lady a regular healing session every week, but this is me. This is me wanting to make it right, isn't it? This has nothing to do with spiritualist healing. This is my need now. Oh, I need to do something for it to help. And the reason why I'm talking about this experience, ladies and gentlemen, is, do you know what? We don't know. Sometimes healing is for someone to pass over into the other world, but in a quiet and calm way. Does that make sense? So healing can be a release, a release from pain. It's not always just the physical element. And what we have to make clear and understand within ourselves is this fact we don't know and that's absolutely fine but what we can do what we can know is that during the whole session we were the best channel for this power that originates within god is being able to flow through directed by the world of spirit then i did my job then I can say, well done. But also for a spiritualist healing medium, we need to allow ourselves to grow. We need to allow ourselves to know more and more and more. We need to be willing to work on this attunement, this closeness with the world of spirit. And now I want to talk about this closeness with the spirit. Because when often you come across, when you talk about this closeness with the spirit world, then it's always spoken about spirit guides. Oh, my guide. My doctor from the world of spirit. But what you actually need to realize is the limitations that the mind creates when you are fixed to just one source. If I relate that to, to our life, if I just have that in mind, oh, I need to go to the gastric specialist and no one else. Well, that might just, this person might just look at my digestive system, my stomach, and that's it. So do I limit myself in this world to have a range of different professionals that I can access to? I don't. So why would I do that with the world of spirit? So Harry Edwards, uh, in his book, uh, Healing Intelligence, he said something really nice. It is seeking the meditation to be with the world of spirit but not to ask individuals to come through it makes sense because attunement is learning how to be together with the spiritual energies becoming one i'm a great believer that there are specialists within the world of spirit too. So if someone comes with an eye problem, then I might not want the one who is focused upon Chinese medicine. That's just a joke now. I want the eye doctor. So I need to keep my mind open to whoever is right for that process in that moment. So the question that we often have, who is it that works with us, doesn't really matter. What matters is the outcome, the quality of the healing energies. The more I'm allowing 
that blending to happen, the more my rational, logical mind is out of the equation, the better those energies will flow through me undisturbed and the better the result will be. But there is also the element of the patient. How receptive is the patient? Well, I know that people say, I want to heal. But maybe subconsciously there is something that holds them back. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I love to smoke, honestly. I didn't give up smoking because I didn't like smoking. I gave up smoking because my spiritual work led me to it. That's an interesting one. Something else to expound on later and not in this talk. The fact is, and this is, this is something that we have really to consider, the spirit world and the God power, they are limited as well by our actions. We have free will, we have choice. So if I have a lung problem, and I go to a spiritualist healing because I know it helps me. But as soon as the healing is finished and I go outside and have my lovely fag, what do I do? How can I blame them that it didn't help? It didn't work. If I don't do anything towards it to be healthy as well. It's coming back to that mental health, which is combined with spirituality, which is seeking well-being. Sometimes we as patients, we also need to change. When that spark within is enlightened, we then have the choice to look into the mirror and to say, do I want to change something or not? And sometimes these are very difficult questions. And not just questions, but there is a lot connected to our lives. And if I have to change my life, it will affect other people too. So these are very big questions. So not everyone is able to move within themselves because they're afraid. So maybe spiritualist healing works on that level of the mental to take away this fear. How beautiful is that one? How many times do we live in fear? How many times are we afraid of the new? How many times we decide to remain within the old just because we know how old works? and what old expects from me. And I know I can actually deal and handle it. Doesn't mean it does me good. So you can see that all of a sudden, spiritualist healing touches upon philosophical questions as well. And that's where it needs time. And sometimes I want you also to consider, sometimes there is positivity within a pain. So when we look at the pain management that we sometimes see, it's like I have a hurting knee, okay, get steroids, and then it's gone. Well, the pain is gone, the cause is still there. But because I, as the individual, I don't feel the pain anymore, start to use the knee far too much and I'm damaging even more. So we know spiritual healing works as a whole. It doesn't, it doesn't just take away symptoms. It tries to touch the cause. The fact is, what the cause is, is activating the self-healing process within the individual. How can I create a better 
connection to that power that we call the healing power. It is through dedication. It is the art to sit within the moment and allowing that blending with the world of spirit to take place. But I also need to do something within me. How do I invoke that spirit mind, which is the connection to the spirit world? So what, how we can do this, for example, is when we use the meditation, for example, to connect with those spiritual aspects within us, to think about good, beautiful things, to have an intention while we are doing it to connect with those in the world of spirit who work with us. It's actually very simple, but yet so complicated because it needs discipline. It needs patience. I had a lady coming to me and said, you know what, I know that I have these healing qualities. I want to learn a bit more. Um, where is the shortcut? <laughs> oh. And then I said, there is no shortcut. And I knew what was in, the, in her mind. It was like, that is a rubbish sitting. And I knew it. But honestly, in those years that I'm doing it, I haven't found one yet. I would tell that. But it is great that there are no shortcuts because it's our journey and it is our healing process. Because what is happening when we train as a healer? We are going through the healing process because we are learning how to work and attune to those healing powers. Because for you who are healers, how does healing, giving healing, affect you? I know that it will strengthen you too. I know that every time you come out of a healing session, you feel energized. I am correct, aren't I? Because how can't you? Because you are the channel of this power to come through you. Why would it bypass you? Because you're part of it. Your spirit is part of it. Healing is a natural act and needs to be simple. So education, and I have to say, I, I'm very happy that I found the Spiritualist National Union to do my healing. Because it's down to earth. Because when I went to some churches, it's like they were all over me with their hands, kneeling in front of my feet. And poor healers, they were quite in an age and they hardly got back up again. And you can see that quite often that we have that impression or that need to do something. But now that you have heard what actually healing is and how that it works and that it's connection through my spirit mind to touch the soul of my patient. I don't actually have to do anything but to be in the stillness. But it might not look very spectacular for people watching me when I do this. But there is where we have to start reflecting ourselves. What do I need to feel comfortable? And maybe also then to reevaluate what is obsolete and what is not. What I found really, really interesting, and I know some of, of you know about this, but I was taught by people from churches who run um, healing services that they had specialist healers. That, for example, 
when you had a problem with arthritis, they would direct you to Anne because they knew that Anne has that element that was helping a lot of people with arthritis. If you had headache problems, you would be sent to Paul. So I find that really interesting because they knew what effect that the individual healer had. And I believe that we should investigate much more. And sometimes this element of exploring, experimenting, is a bit missing within the healing faculty because it's always seen, I need to be still, I need to be passive, and then it works. But there is so much more that we can access. So development is so important. Know your skill. Know how you connect to the world of spirit. When I was asked, how do you do it? I said, I just do. I have no idea. Now I know how I do it. I understand the word of attunement how I can achieve this state of mind where I go into the stillness and I have learned to just allow the power to do its job. However, I'll be judged. I don't, I do care, I have to say, I do care. But I try not to care because I trust the power to know what is important. We also have to look at the psychological effect. And, and spiritualist healing, it is, it is a bit sad sometimes because people often seek us when they are left on their own, given up on. It is their last hope to come through our doors because there is no one that thinks that it can, that anything can be done for them. I had that quite a lot within our church where people came in and said, listen, I don't know what this place is. I don't really feel comfortable, but you are my last hope. You are my last straw. And I know some of you had the same experience. So we need to develop an awareness how we interact and engage with people. Because for us here, so I can judge, you all believe in the world of spirit. I don't have to convince you. But you know, a lot of people out there, they don't. But desperation brought them through our doors into our healing sanctuaries. And it is our job to explain in a very rational way what they can expect and what is going to happen and that we can't promise cure. You are their last hope at times. Know your business. And you know, for someone who is terminal, to be free of fear, is, is, is a great healing. To be able to accept the journey, to get at ease with what lies in front of, and yet despite what they are going through, being able to live a happy and fulfilled life for the time being. This is healing. And this is what this power can give. And you are an active part 
in a passive manner that allows that to happen. How spiritual that is to be of service just with that wish, I'd like to be part of this help. And we can support this process with encouraging a positive outlook. I know people can now come and say, David, but then you're talking about placebo. It's right, absolutely, the power of thought. We know how powerful that is. But I also know that you as spiritualist healing mediums or healing or mediums in general, you know when there is another power touching your own energy. And you know that this is not yours, this is something else. So you are convinced. And you know, in the end, when it helps, it helps. But then I also question, why would it work with animals? Animals are objective. They don't believe. So that explanation of placebo doesn't work with animals. And it doesn't really work with children either, because they don't know what belief system means till they are taught to know what it means. The fact is, in the end, it doesn't matter. It only matters, ladies and gentlemen, that you know 100% that you are attuned to that power that is directed through the world of spirit. Never forget, it is the God power that allows the healing to take place. It is the God power that allows natural law to be overruled. It is not the spirit world, nor is it our rational mind. I just wanna encourage you to go into that subject, go deeper into that attunement allow that, that, that blending with, with the world of spirit to become even more. And then, then magic will happen. Now your journey to investigate starts. I wish you all the best on your journey. Thank you so much.